Hi everyone. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to show you uh, something that I'm going to be doing in the next couple of days. I'm not sure when, but pretty soon. Uh, this is, um, I'm sure you've seen it somewhere on the internet, but what you do is uh, like, imagine this is a, a sort of a little bowl with resin in it. Well, first what you do is you put this on the resin. See the little fishy? Then you have then another layer of resin on top. When that's dry, you put the next layer on exactly on top of it. Then you do another layer of resin and then you put the last piece on like that. It's not lined up pretty well. There you go. And see how that really resembles a little fish from the uh, from the top. Now, you have them in, in all shapes and sizes, really small ones like this one. These are really small. And then you have them with a little bend in them. I've got to get this off the plastic. It's sort of sticky. So first you do one layer resin, next layer. you got to get them exactly aligned. Then the last layer, put that on top. And then you sort of have this little fishy swimming around now here's another one and really the chinese are not so you know good about telling you how to do it so you have to figure it out pretty much for yourself so i thought i would do this one first and then number four i think i should i should this one works upwards so five four three and then number two wherever that goes I'm not sure what this is would that be a fin or something see that's where it gets difficult maybe here and let's just say it's here and you put that one on and then this one goes in last, but what this is, I have no clue. No, it's not going to fit there. I think it'll have to go here. So that's the, uh, that's a sort of a fishy. Now I have them in orange and in blue. Here is a lot of oranges. See how detailed they are? And then you have them right down here. Uh, we have some guppies. Little guppy. This is a real ugly little fish, isn't it? That's really sad. Well, <clears throat> and the white ones. I got some white ones. Here they are. Absolutely no clue how to put them on. But we'll see. We'll figure it out. So I went to the, um, the, uh, the second-hand store and... Because I'm going to do a couple... So this is uh, what I'm going to put them in. It's big enough. And uh, maybe that one would fit better. Eh, that one fits too. And then I'm going to put in a little bit of green stuff. See, this is green stuff. You're not really seeing it that well, but there's some green stuff. But if that's not uh, to your liking, you can always paint on it with acrylic paint. That works also. And uh, when you just, you know, fill it all up might add a little bit of glitter here and there you know just to give the uh, illusion of water because just resin is pretty flat so we might put in a little itty bitty glitter just to make it more lively let's put them all on there and so that's what i'm gonna be doing but i'm gonna figure it out first before i really start it I might, you know, look at a couple of um, videos on YouTube if I find some people. There is one that really paints it, and that is something you you will not believe it. Uh, I think I might even have to find that one for you guys. I'll do maybe do that tomorrow. I'm not sure yet. I'm pretty um pretty uh, busy. So let's put this away. And get to the pouring. And of course, first off, this is the April list. If you have sponsored my channel in April and your name is not on here, it's easy to just, you know, pause the uh, video and check if your uh, name is on here. 
If not, please slip me an email and I'll uh, fix that. I'll make that right. And this is the one of May 2019. So thank you all for sponsoring my channel. Now, I'm pretty late. It's uh, 1.30 almost. And uh, that's because my dog is sick again. The poor little sweetheart. First, he was limping a little bit on the hind leg. And then the next day, I saw this, uh, well, a, a, a huge swelling on his hind leg. But I thought, you know, because she, she was, like I told you, she was jumping around like a rabbit. I think she sprained something. And then, you know, I thought, okay, let's just see for one more day. I hate going straight to the vet, you know, if it's just a sprain. Because she had that the day before and that or the week before. And it per perfectly worked out. And uh, But this time it didn't, and it started to swell up. And this was the other leg, not the same leg. And so I went to the uh, vet, and she said, wow, that really looks bad. And she couldn't walk on it, so she sort of hopped on one hind leg. But I have this little harness that I put on her so I can help her. So I slept um, Tuesday to Friday. I slept on a, uh air mattress, didn't sleep much. Then I had to go to uh, get some blood drawn, and good thing I took a, a day off, but I was going to do a lot of pouring, but that didn't come to pouring because I was looking after my dog. So um, we're hoping that she is doing better now. She can walk on it again, and um, I'm just hoping it's going to be, you know, a couple of days and it's all gone. It still is a little bit thick, so if anyone out there has had something similar that the dog's leg sort of... It's like there's a lot of, you know, uh, we call it udema, udema. I don't know. It looks like moisture is in there. So if you have any experience with that, please tell me. She is on antibiotics, but I'm I'm thinking it's a sprain of some sort. But who, you know, who, I don't know. I'm not a vet. So that's what a vet is for. I hope she's right. She thought that she was stuck by something, you know, something bit her, something like a spider or something. Could be. Could really be. But the thing is, she sleeps upstairs in bed. So I'm not really sure how that would happen. And my husband never lets her walk alone, you know, in the, uh, in the forest or anything like that. She's always on a leash. Don't want her getting un under a car or anything like that so she's always under on the leash so i'm not sure yeah okay let's get to pouring but at least now guys you know what i uh what i've been uh doing the last couple of days yes and I, I really get really down when something happens to my dog. I really get really, really down, really depressed. And then when, when she's, you know, going, when it turns for the better, then I feel really good. Oh, boy. This is really going to be my last dog. I, I promise you that because I hate it when they have to go to the vet. You know, she was, uh, we put her in a, uh, in a basket and uh, we took the whole basket, me and my, my husband and I lifted it up and put it in the back of, uh, we have another car, a bigger car. It's like a, a petrol, don't know how you call it, SUV, SUV. And we put the whole basket in the back of the car. We drove it to the, uh, to the doctor. Yeah, I have a real, really <laughs> strange, strange vet, but she's really good. But um, I called them. I said, could you come, you know, come to the house? Because I don't want to put her in a car. She doesn't like it. And she's in pain. And uh, the assistant uh, asked, the, uh, asked the doctor. But then she came back. She says, uh, the doctor doesn't have a car at the moment. <laughs> that, that didn't surprise me. Okay. I think next time we'll just say, oh, we'll come and pick you up. How about that? <laughs> Okay. Well, at least she's not doing it for uh, the big bucks. Because if she was uh, a veterinarian f only for the money, she'd have a big car, right? Because over here, I'm telling you, something when something happens to uh, animals and they have to be operated on, it's big bucks. I, I guess it's uh, the same in uh, 
in America and Australia. I did have a vet once. He was really kind. If you came with a with a bird or a rat, I once w went uh, over there with a rat, and uh, he didn't want money at all. He just said, yeah, go. Take your rat and go. <laughs> he was a really nice guy. And I drove a taxi, and the, the, the really fun thing was he stopped his practice, and he took all of his... Um, um, family and they moved to I think it was Portugal and the funny thing is I was driving a taxi way back then and I drove them from uh, their house to the station to get on the train for Schiphol our big uh, our really big um, airport yeah so uh, that was really that was really funny a big coincidence like you would say okay guys we're ready for this what I'm going to do is a 20 by 20, so this is 20 by 20, and this is going to be one of my bottle cap pours because I have not got that out of my system yet, and I have a hunch that I'm going to be keeping that in my system for some time because I I, I had a lot of compliments about it, and um, I sort of really, the you know, the one that I call best sell bottle cap pour ever, that one well i was really really you know just overcome with the beauty of it too so but this time i'm going to try and do uh, a little bit more of the uh, metallic colors in it so i have the bronze and i have the gold and i'm going to put those in first because they're going to come out last like we all know what you put in first comes out last and of course we need a little bit of color and then I'm gonna come in with my turquoises now lots of people are asking me about my colors but um, as you know most of the colors I mix myself so um, it's phalo blue and green and titanium white that makes all the turquoises put more green in you get the green turquoise put more blue in you get the blue turquoise and if you want it lighter, you put in more titanium, right? So that's number one. Then I have, this is a pure color. This is a burnt sienna. And it's the transparent one. You have an opaque and you have transparent. This is transparent. Now the Van Dyke Brown is a nice color. But what I also put in there is a, a little bit of... Um, and it does not matter which which one, but I put in a little bit of red and orange just to warm it up. So that's the dark brown. Then I have this green, which is permanent green light. But the thing is that I uh, put in a little bit of yellow. It doesn't matter what kind of yellow, just put in a little bit of yellow. And that makes it just a little bit more appealing to the eye, at, at least for me. And as a lot of people have said, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And that is so true. Because some pieces I don't like, and I hear people saying, oh no, I love that. And I'm thinking, nah, not so much. So uh, those are the colors. Those are my standard colors. Now, this bronze that I have here, as you can see, is pretty bronzy. Um, this is just mica, mica whatever you call it. It's a pigment and I mix it with pouring medium. And for this I take the thicker pouring medium. And that's what I uh, put in that powder. And then, you know, sometimes I need a little bit of water and that's it. So we're gonna put that on top because I want two full caps, of course. I think I'll just leave it like that. Now what I would like is that it wouldn't spill out just for once. So I'm going to try and do this really quick. <laughs> That's not quick enough. But I like what it's doing. So there we go. Yeah. That's a nice uh, splash of uh, metallic that's coming out. And I really like what it's doing. There we go. 
and this is <laughs> this is really pretty. I love it. And I think this is going to go with my other one that is called Less is More. I am going to manipulate it a little bit because I want the colors to go over each other. Wow. Those are some awesome cells. Now, what I would like, and I'm fingers crossed, is that it's going to work into the background. Because I made the background thinner than the one I'm pouring with. And I see some here. And a little bit there. That need, Yeah, it's growing. This is going to be good. Because what I'd really like is for it to grow that big that it's going to go at least an inch out of where I poured it. And I'm not sure if you're following it, but it is working. They are really growing. And the best way to see this, uh, under this video, if you click on the video, in the, you know, in the middle of the video, you will see that timeline thing with a little slider. Uh, if you slide back and forth, you'll see this, how much this grows. Right now, while we're looking at it, it's almost like there's nothing happening. But if you slide it back and forth, you'll see that this is really growing. And I love it. Yeah, I think this is one of, uh, this is going to be my signature thing. <laughs> my signature thing. Now, that doesn't mean that everyone has to call it the Anne-Marie bottle cap technique. No, no, no. It's just the bottle cap technique. I don't want my name on anything because I think that is really stupid. Stupid. <laughs> I think that's uh, because I'm sure like 80 years ago, someone has sat there with a bottle cap off a beer and has done this. But, you know, I'm sure they have because every everything is done. You know, I have not seen anything that has not been done before. The spinning on the uh, on the turntable thing that, you know, that is so old that that is like out of the 70s. Uh, blowing paint over each other has been done before. Everything's been done before. Uh, people, I'm just uh, chatting up here because, <laughs> because I'm waiting for this to grow bigger, bigger, bigger. So uh, that's why. And there are some amazing cells in here. I'll show you a close-up in a bit. But there are some cells that resemble a reptile. That is really cool. And uh, I'll, I'll wait a bit because I'm going to do an, an, the next pour and I will uh, make a picture of this to put on the front of the video so that you can see just how far this is all going to grow into the background. But I'm, I really am hoping it's going to go at least a half an inch more. I might even have to help it a little bit. Like if I let it come down here a bit. But I do have to keep those cells nice and round. There it is. Oh, I love the gold. The gold is staying there just as, as it is now. I'm so happy about that. Because usually it just, you know, sort of sinks into the background. This here has gold. Here's a little bit of gold. That's a little bit of gold. Down here is gold. And everything you see down here. Everything that is more the ochre color, that is all gold. A little bit up here. So it has a, a really nice... Uh, oh, that is nice going over the side here. Okay, I think it's time for a close-up. And I'll just make a picture, uh, you know, in about an hour. Because then it will absolutely not move anymore. But it is turning into something beautiful. Okay, if you don't he hear me in a bit... Uh, I might lose my audio, so I know I'll just stop the video. Okay, guys, this is the close up as you can see here. Look at that. See how the paints are merging into the background? That is beautiful. Now, here you can see all the gold. Everything that's the lighter color is gold, and then the bronze, which is pretty. There are really some awesome cells. 
Mm -hmm. This sort of gives me an idea because um, I'm not sure if you can see this here, this. That I like too, that really, really very lightly little bit of paint. I would really like to try and do on, you know, that light. Uh huh. Okay, so got to think about that. Okay. So uh, this is a 20 by 20. I sell them usually for 49, including everything else, no additional costs. If you think this is the painting that I want on my wall, you'll have to email me. Email me at Ritterhoff Art uh, at Zigo.nl. I will leave the uh, the email under the video, and uh, I'll just uh, see what happens. Right. So, love you all to pieces. See you in a bit. Later.